All right, class. This pre-lecture assignment picks up where we left off uh, at the end of last lecture. Uh, remember, at the end of last lecture, we talked a little bit about the central dogma and uh, how it controls life. Um, just as a reminder, the central dogma uh, consists of DNA, RNA, and protein, and the processes which link the three molecules. So DNA is transcribed into RNA, and RNA is translated into protein. And through variations of uh, DNA and um, modification of RNA, etc., um, we see that there's many different forms of life, all stemming from the same exact nucleotides and uh, processes. Okay, so now we're going to dive into the specifics of the central dogma, starting with DNA. Uh, I'm sure you're all familiar with this uh, image here um, of DNA. Uh, DNA, of course, stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. And this name actually uh, provides some insight onto the molecular makeup of DNA. So deoxyribo is actually referring to the uh, ribose sugar that is part of the backbone of DNA and deoxy ribo means that the ribose actually is lacking uh, an oxygen that um, normal ribose would have if you will. Additionally uh, the DNA backbone has a phosphate um, group. These phosphates actually connect the different sugars together which is what forms this uh, strand that you see here on the outside that's made up of the sugars and the phosphates, commonly uh, referred to as the sugar phosphate backbone. Now if we look uh, at this figure here you can see that there's some uh, um, connections between the backbones and these connections are actually the nucleotides. So going back to uh, what DNA stands for, deoxyribonucleic acid, uh, these connections these connections here are the uh, nucleotides, um, uh, which is part of the name. Um, so what are these nucleotides um, and, and what do they do? Well, let's zoom in on this image here, uh, often referred to as a ladder. Uh, you can see the sugar ph phosphate background I was talking about. The P's here are being the phosphates and the S's being the uh, deoxyribose sugar and um, these nucleotides are making up the rungs of the ladder. So the different nucleotides uh, are usually represented as A, T, uh, C, and G and if we look over here you can see that that stands for uh, guanine, cytosine, adenine, and thymine. And don't get too hung up on the uh, specific names but do remember that there's A, T, C, and G and we'll talk about uracil here in a minute. Uh, so, uh, the uh, one strand that you saw on the previous image um, here has its complement uh, strand, strand, which is this one on the other side. And what makes it a complement strand is the way that the nucleotides um, bind with each other. So, there's specific um, properties of these molecules that uh, cause them to favor being bound to a, a particular other nucleotide. So that's why you can see here the A's bind to T's and, and G's and C's are paired together. And that has to again, again has to do with the um, uh, structural makeup of the molecules. So these uh, components are conserved and um, the code and the sequence of these nucleotides stores information and depending on the sequence and the information stored we can see that there's um, or it gives rise to many different proteins etc. Now RNA is slightly different so the uh, molecular makeup of RNA is very similar to DNA and uh, the primary difference um, is that RNA is not uh, deoxyribose nucleic acid. RNA is just ribonucleic acid. So where DNA has 
uh, no oxygen, the RNA actually has an oxygen. And the other major difference is that RNA makes use of uracil instead of uh, thymine. And uh, the reason for this is actually not because RNA favors uracil, it's more because DNA actually uh, does not want to have uracils in its code. DNA is very important. It stores the information, it's what replicates, it's what's passed on from cell to cell. And, uh, cytosine is a fairly unstable actually nucleotide. It will fairly readily um, deaminate, de and deaminate means it will uh, lose this nitrogen group. And when cytosine loses that nitrogen group, you can see that it looks exactly the same as uracil uh, with the addition of this oxygen. And this uracil is the same thing as thymine minus this carbon group. Uh, don't worry about those specifics. Uh, just know that DNA doesn't want to have uracil in its code because uracil and cytosine are so similar. And they readily uh, uh, are converted from uh, each other from one another. So if DNA had uracil, it would, uh, and a um, cytosine spontaneously converted to a uracil, um, the information stored in our code would not be conserved as well as it should be, and uh, mistakes could happen, mutations could arise, and um, the information stored would be very unstable. So that is why DNA does not have uracil, and um, RNA can be distinguished from DNA because it does have a year or so. All right, um, now we're going to take a moment uh, to ask you some questions and have you answer some questions because I just uh, presented quite a lot of information. So um, on the next part of this uh, mini assignment, you'll have some questions to answer.